The devil is in Atlanta Army surrounding Welcome to the newest edition to Is Survived By Productions. Now, you've heard of the History of the Chorus podcast. Now, allow me to introduce you to the History of the Chorus After Hours podcast. See what I did there? I'm your host, Curtis. Joining me on every episode is my new co-host and friend, Eric. How's it going, Eric? It's going good. How are you today? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm excited to uh, get this new podcast going side to uh dive into your mind on some of these different bands uh but not yet not yet we're gonna hold off on on those bands because i want to dive into your mind and learn a little bit more about eric so you, are you ready for that man this is terribly exciting <laughs> maybe terrifying in general i'm not really sure what we're gonna find up there man cobweb spiders <laughs> now you listeners may be wondering uh what this after hours podcast is all about so uh my friend here eric uh, is an avid listener of the History of the Corps uh, podcast. Would you say that's true, jo- uh, Curtis? I almost called you Josh. Would you say that's true, Eric? <laughs> yes, I am. You know, the sad thing is I almost said Josh, and then I almost said my own name. So, yeah. Anyway, so uh, he is an avid listener of the uh, History of the Corps podcast. Uh, some of the bands we talked uh, about on that uh, podcast he's actually familiar with. Uh, at least by name, and then some of these bands you've, you've never heard of, right? That we've Not even a little. That's what I thought. Okay. So we kind of thought it would be interesting to cast it down, um, be able to talk together about some of these bands and uh, some different things about it one-on-one. Uh, essentially, what the goal is here is we're trying to get a listener's experience with the podcast and exploring the history of discography of each band together. And I thought Eric would be the perfect person for that, uh, but like I said, not in this episode. Uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna dive into his mind first. Um, so I, I thought I'd give Eric a chance to uh, give us his background uh, with music and the uh, core genre. So Eric, first question is: uh, We're talking about your music journey here. I All want right. to know uh, what has been your music genre progression over the years. So. Obviously, now you're into the core genre stuff. What, wh- like, where did you start? I mean, whether that's just like not lullaby stuff, nothing like that, but like, hey, when I was a wee baby lot, exactly, <laughs> you know, more like, oh, uh, you know, I started out in country music and I kind of like that, I grew up on that. And then, you know, what's your progression from there to here? Well, I describe myself as a musical spaz. Okay, interesting. From uh, one end of the extremes all the way to the other end of the extremes. I still listen to this day to things like uh, oh bluegrass all the way up to some pretty heavy metal, and uh, I don't skip a beat much in between. What was the uh, um, uh, it's a guy's name and then it's the Texas Playboys. What's oh, his name? Bob Wills and his Bob Texas Wills, Playboys. Yeah. I keep wanting to say Bob Mills. That's a furniture guy. <laughs> oh man, a little yeah. rag time. Yeah, so you're a little bit all over the place. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. You still listen to those, that, right? Yes, yes I, I do actually. actually yeah. Okay, so uh, can you describe to me when and how you got into uh, the core genre? Well, you know, right about middle school, mm-hmm. I hated everything and everyone. <laughs> it definitely got a <laughs> dose of the teenage angst. Absolutely. So I dove in a little bit to uh, oh, some pretty heavy stuff, actually. Uh, I don't even know. Like, so uh, you can do name drop some stuff here? Oh, like... I'm uh, interested. Under Oath is a big one. Got me started. Oh, uh, I tray you. And then, oh. uh, yeah, I know. I, that's right. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just like, I, I always forget about while, that right? band. I always <laughs> forget about that band. And then uh, another one, actually, I jumped straight, just head first all the way in. Job for a cowboy. Oh, see, and that's another one, too. I always forget about them. I, I went, used to be huge into them, too. I went from, like, not knowing anything about it to liking the heaviest stuff that right. I could find. Right. So. You dove deep. See, Joffrey Cowboy is one of those bands that, like, I used to listen to it really, especially that first album. Right. Oh, I guess it was an EP. 
and uh yeah that was that was my jam back in the day and then like now i go back and I listen to it personally and i'm just like oh what was wrong with me man i had That's a lot that, of issues uh, apparently teenage angst right there yeah man oh, hmm, some crazy stuff all right cool so uh what's what's your music background in terms of um maybe playing in bands um maybe even like single instruments you played did you play in like orchestra or or band in school yeah i played percussion in school that's what i thought okay i wasn't for sure but i was i was putting uh making these questions i can make time yeah okay every once in a while the human metronome is what they called them right that's absolutely yeah (laughs) (laughs) as he shakes his head uh yeah so what's what's your music background um so i I picked up a guitar at Mm -hmm. some point decided i need to learn how to play this and uh Went along, made up some riffs, and me and you actually recorded a little bit for, I think it was like your senior project. Yeah. And that's somewhere out on the expanses of YouTube. And uh, Deep in the crevices. You really want to find it. You're going to have to dig deep, guys. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, we did that for a while. Recorded, what, four songs? Three or four. I can't remember what it was. Somewhere in there. It was supposed to be five, and like that fifth one was just like random noises I had to make. Random dancing. Like, yeah, something to just like fill it because I ran out of time. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, I got an A on the project, but you yes, know. <laughs> I did good. <laughs> but I think at that point it was just like, hey, just, you know, finish the project. You'll be good. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, is that it? Uh, pretty much. Okay. Since then, I don't think I've done a whole lot in the way of uh, expanding my musical knowledge or anything. But yeah, you play I, bass though, right? You still got a bass? I still got a bass. Okay. Still just... got a couple guitars that I haven't. They're uh, sadly dusting up. Oh, that's not. You have to dust them off, man. Yeah, dust is guitar tears. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Well, so uh, can you name me some of your favorite bands currently in the genre, core genre? So uh, currently. I think Norma Jean's making their way to the top. That's a good. That's a good answer. I am wearing that shirt just, today. You can just stop right there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're Go doing on. good there. <laughs> um, far as like core, post hardcore too. I've always loved Silverstein. Mm-hmm. Their last couple albums haven't really super hit for me, but traditionally I love Silverstein. Yes. Yep. Um, I guess again, post hardcore, southern core, metal core, whatever you want to call them, depending on the album you're looking at. Uh, Memphis Mayfire has always been one I like too. Okay. Uh, they have been all over the place, haven't they? Now they're kind of moving towards new metal. Not a big fan of that, but hey. Yeah. To each their own. They do their thing. True. Very true. But anyway, that's just a couple. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So speaking of uh, bands, it's kind of an interesting question. So I'm, I'm interested to see what you will say to this. Uh, when you're discovering a new band or even a band that you know, discovering a new song that they're putting out. What do you usually look for in that new band or that or that that new song? Like, what jumps out to you when you're first listening to it? Is it like the music, the lyrics? So, like for me, this is an example. For me, a lot of times, if like if I've never heard of a band before or whatever, and I'm listening to a song for the first time, it's usually the music and kind of the rhythm that jump out to me first. I don't know why it just does. That's just kind of like how my brain works, I guess. I know I'm weird, but that's just how it is for me. Um, sometimes if it's a if it's a band that I know and they put out like a brand new song, I, I'll listen more the first time for the overall just because I know them. But more than anything, if it's a brand new band, brand new song, uh, my mind goes to like the music and the rhythm first. So like, what is it for you? So probably the very first thing I get a hold of is those riffs. That guitar riff, if it catches me the right way, oh, yeah. we're going to get into that. Oh, yeah. So after that, i got to listen to it two or three times to really get to the point where I like it. Like some of these songs I have listened to 150 times probably by this point. And that's just in the last two months. <laughs> so I really, when I get into a band, I really dive into the music and the sound. And then I get really into the lyrics. I pull up the lyrics and I'm reading along going, wow, that's great. Or, wow, that's kind of awful. So it can lyrics can make or break a song for me too. Oh, for sure. But yeah, for sure. The first thing that really grabs me is that guitar. That if there's just a riff in there that's like, whoo, I need more. That's the hook and it's got me. <laughs> I need a cold compress, man. <laughs> whoo, whoo. Yep. Yeah, um something when you were saying that too made me think, uh for me personally too, the other thing I listen to is 
uh, production quality. I don't like my music to be overproduced, but then at the same time, you don't want it to be like, you know, basement one microphone for six, you know, instruments at the same time. And you can't really hear the vocalist over all the guitars and drums, but I like, you know me, I like it to be pretty decently raw. You know, I'm okay with some production to it and everything, but I just, there's some bands now that I'm just like, oh. I can already tell this is way overproduced. There's too much studio work and just like, it's, I don't know. I just feel like Britney Spears I wouldn't, 2001. right. Like I wouldn't want to see that live <laughs> because I feel like it would just be, I don't know. It just would not be good to me, but that's yeah. just, you know, so. All right, cool. Yeah. I was, I was really interested to see what you would say to that question. Okay. Now, Eric, I don't know if you know this or not, but we here at Is Survived by Productions History of the Chorus podcast, me and Josh, we are big fans of split EPs. Do you know what a split EP is? I do. Yes. Okay. okay. Are you a fan of split EPs? It is a really good way to find a new band. Amen, brother. Amen. If there's to a band that, on man. there you already like, and that is just a fast track. Hey, these guys like these guys, typically. Not always, but typically. Not always, yeah. But uh they you know, hey, I like them, they like each other, maybe I'll like them too. I mean, that's just a fast track to find somebody new. And if they're already in the same genre that I'm already digging, hey, let's go for it. Let's go for it, man. Hey, and it's all about saving money for these bands, too. Two bands, one production, one big bill. There you go. Split it between the two bands or three bands, however many you want it. Four, and five, six, seven. producing, you know, putting out a new EP, <laughs> exactly. trying to switch labels, whatever, that's a big deal, too. Exactly, man. Yes, yes. We are big fans of split EPs. And so is Eric. I'm I'm so glad to hear that, which I didn't. <laughs> I honestly didn't think it wouldn't be, but you know, you never know. Sometimes I'm, I haven't come across anybody yet. Most people just don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> They're like, "What's a split? split e- what? What's a split EP? What's an EP? I'm what like, are split you know, EPs? Yeah. Is that like when you split peas open? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They need to bring back. They need to bring back split EPs, man. Not enough bands do it. There was. It seemed to be a big thing back in like the early to mid 2000s um but not a whole lot of bands do it anymore it's very rare kind of sad it's very sad man it's very sad you know you're a musician you're supposed to be in this together you know it's supposed to be one big pot and we're supposed to be working together to spread you know the common gift of music you know no everybody just wants to do their own thing man yep looking out for your own spread the love people spread the love okay now Last two questions are, are kind of similar, uh, or not last two, next two. Uh, this first one, I think I know the answer. I think I do. Let me shock you. But you might shock me. I don't know. I always think that about people. I'm like, I think I know the answer, and then they always shock me. I'm like, what? Josh does that a lot. Like when we're talking about like some of these different bands, it'd be like, I hated this album. I'm like, what? Actually, no. um, dude. I was like, no. Like, I could have swore. Like, I thought about you this whole time. I was listening to this album. Be like, Josh would love this album. He would love it. No, he hates it. Or the quite opposite would be like, ah, he's not going to like this. I love this album. What? Yeah. So anyway, back to you, though. <laughs> Get rid of Josh. He's not in this yeah. podcast. Uh, okay. Live shows or studio albums? Which one do you prefer? So recently, I really think we were part of a kind of a uh i don't know movement uh, uh, there's this movement going back to you know the live mm. going really i've been to a couple live shows recently and it was just absolutely mesmerizing the show the quality of the bands they're happy to be there the crowd's happy to be there there's nothing like it that being said i can't fold my laundry while i'm at a show <laughs> So Have there's you a good tried? <laughs> there's a good place for both. From what you've told me in recent uh, concerts, there's some weird people out there, so you might get away with it, man. Well, they might fold me in my own laundry, but <laughs> that, well, that, there may be, yeah, <laughs> that's true. But so. I think there is a place for both. I love going to live shows, though. But the way I find new music typically is, you know, ye old googling, right. Find or the history whatever. of the course podcast. <laughs> I found a couple good ones actually so far. Yes, got the name in there. Okay, yes. cool. Yes, yeah. Um, I we when we've talked about that before. You know the whole movement thing and oh yeah, and, uh, a renaissance, if you will. There you go, a renaissance. Yes, that's a good word for it. Um, and I told you, I, I said that I think one of the biggest 
reasons for that is, and, and it's obvious, I mean, it's COVID, nobody right. was able to do anything. So it's like for what, a year, year and a half, two years? Roughly, yeah. It was building up where it's just like, finally, when you got to go to your first show again after a year and a half, two years, yeah, you're just like, yes, this is awesome, you know. And it's the most amazing thing ever. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. I think that goes with the crowd, and I think it goes with the musicians too. I mean, they were still able to do some stuff during COVID, but it was, hey, we're putting out a live, you know, show on youtube or whatever and it's not the same because you're just out there by yourself they cannot feed off that crowd energy exactly and a good band that's been out touring for a long time like a lot of these guys we're talking about on these they really really love that crowd interaction yes and uh, even some of the younger bands i've gone and seen recently i mean there is i don't even it's a it's a not metal core i guess you call it a oh glam or whatever anyway it's uh she was up there telling jokes while somebody was changing guitar strings. Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, she's just like, hey, let's interact with the crowd. Was it Spirit Box? No, th- I no, haven't no. seen them yet. Oh, okay. okay. I'm thought, waiting no, on that. For some reason, I thought you But uh, okay. Unleash the Archers. Oh, okay. That was okay. her. She's yeah. just up there, you know, just you know, telling jokes, having a good old time. Yeah. But and I, we, I love that crowd interaction. Right. And we've talked about that, too, before of the energy between both sides of the band's got to bring that energy and the crowd's going to feed off that, mm-hmm. which in turn then goes right back to the band. They feed off the crowd's energy. And we so, get frothing at the mouth, and here we go. Yeah. There's definitely a place for both for both things, uh, live shows and studio albums, for sure. Um, so, yeah, but you go live shows a little more than studios, probably? Studio albums? What about a live album? A live album? <laughs> well. <laughs> those aren't as good. Typically, those aren't as awesome. No. Yeah, just... Yeah, no, that's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, speaking of live shows, Eric, what's your uh, what's your favorite part or parts of uh, of going to a live show? Favorite part would probably be the uh, I don't know. There's this interaction. It's hard to explain if you haven't been to a live like you know metal show, and uh, whether you're in the pit or you're on the outside of the pit watching the pit in the front row, just absolutely trying to get high fives from the lead singer, whatever you're trying to do, there is this feeling there. And I guess it's just solidarity of everybody in the crowd loves this band. You love this band. They are this band. And it's just, it's one of those great feelings. And it's like I said, very hard other than solidarity might be the word very hard to explain that, but I do really enjoy it. No, I get that. Yeah, I get that, man. That's good. That is good. Okay. Hey, Let's talk a little bit about the history of the course podcast. All right, man, I'm just name dropping everywhere, it. man. Okay, so uh, again, you're an avid listener. Have you listened to every episode so far? So far, dang man, keep it up. Kid. He's a, he's a he's a true fan, people, and you should be too. Go listen to every episode, just like Eric, man. Don't you want to be like Eric? I mean, like seriously, little kids they want to grow up and be like Eric when they grow up. And, uh, and listen to every episode of the History Course podcast. Now, um, so so far, Eric, and listening to all the episodes, what have you enjoyed uh, about the history of the Course podcast? So, I do like learning about bands that I kind of know about. I like one example is I knew about Norma Jean. We're going to talk about them here in a minute, but I really do like Norma Jean. Always, kind of have, I guess. There's been this time where I didn't, but anyway learning about their lineup changes, learning about their history. Why does this album sound weird? (laughs) You know, uh, the different, you know, trial and error things they did through the years. Right. And another big one is finding new stuff. Because a few of these I know of the names. Some of them I've listened to. Some of them I just kind of swept under the rug because, oh, you know, that guy liked him in high school. And we can't have that in my playlist. (laughs) So, yeah, everybody knows there's that guy. But anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. But giving them a second chance and things like that, you know, coming through, I've enjoyed that. Everyone deserves a second chance. Even those bands. Even those bands. Yeah, I've, I've been down that route before, too, of like, eh, I'm not going to listen to this now. Back Like, you have that, that like, um, oh, what's the, I just had the word and I lost it. Like, arrogance in high school of like. That obnoxious no, I'm not. I'm not listening to that band, no. He's like, somebody be like, hey, you should check out. Nope. No, I'm not going to do that. You like him? No, I'm not going to do that. But then, yeah, it's like now as we get older, it's like 
Oh yeah, I remember that band from high school. I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a try. Oh my gosh, this band is so good. What was wrong with me? There was something wrong with me and not this band, you know. That's it right there. So So Eric, why should someone listen to the History of the Course podcast? Well, do you like music? You should listen. Do you want to learn about new bands, old bands, something in between bands? You should listen. Um lots of reasons to listen. I mean, there's a lot of fun things that go on during this. I learned a lot. Learned a lot about Mr. Curtis here as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Maybe a little Josh. too much. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. But yeah. good old uh, Josh's cat. Was it Pickles? Pickles. <laughs> oh. Tater. Tater, that's Tater it. Tater the cat. Tater and I Sassy. I it was a food man. product. Tater and Sassy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those little rascals. So, anyway, I have enjoyed it overall. Like I said, learning the new things, that's been the big one. Yeah. Okay. So, if uh, final question here. If you were in control of the uh, podcast, that is the History of the Course podcast, by the way, uh, what would you do different, if anything at all? So far, I've been really enjoying it. Nothing really different. I'm excited to see some of the new things you guys got coming up, new bands, whatever. Maybe uh, Ladies of the Core, hopefully. Hmm, maybe, maybe. They're coming. They're coming, man. I'm we excited get, to hear some of those because yeah, I know that's become a real big thing, talking about Spirit Box and things mm-hmm. like that here recently. They're, they've become a big deal. Yeah. So I'm excited to see when y'all get to there. But Yeah, we just we have such a backlog of like... Well, there's so many bands to oh, talk about. Oh, there's just so many bands out and there. they're dude. all so good. Well, and it's like the sad thing is like, okay, we've talked about Vanna already, right? And I remember we got to the point where we were... We were trying to figure out, okay, which band we're going to talk about next. And I was going through my phone one day, just kind of looking at all the music I had. And I got to Van, I was like, I was like, dude, how could I forget about Van? Like, it didn't, like, because, like, when we first came up with this idea, it was like, okay, you start thinking about, you know, Androth and, you know, like, Norma Jean, Chariot, Maylene, whatever. Oh, I Every time I die. Maylene. How do I forget oh, yes. about Maylene? Oh, yeah. That's definitely one of my top favorites yeah and i was wondering if you were gonna say there or not i meant question two add <laughs> maylene uh so yeah i just i don't know you just start thinking about all those and it's kind of like you miss so many and i know there's gonna be other ones that come up in my mind i'm like oh how did i forget this band it's like one of my favorite bands and to me like like a band like vanna that's they were like metalcore for a while there, man. I mean, that was the like, face of when I thought of metalcore, I thought of Vanna. That was the first thing I would always think of. Yeah, yeah, back in the day. So cool, man. Well, I hoped, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed getting to know a little bit about you. I know I did. Most of it I knew uh, already because, like I said, we're good friends and everything, and we talk a lot, especially music, especially the last couple of months about music. <laughs> but yes, uh, but yeah. So if uh, if you guys enjoyed what you just heard and you want to hear some more from eric make sure to uh to uh, follow us and subscribe to the show you can follow us on twitter at is survived by pro for news and the latest episode postings not just on this show but other shows too we got where did i go here oh we have the history of the course podcast <laughs> It's my setup is a little bit different than when I usually do this on the other shows because, yeah, anyway. So we have other shows, too. You should check them out. The History of the Chorus podcast, which we've name dropped about a million times in this episode. Uh, that's all about our music podcast. You should know that if you're listening to this. Uh, the other ones are the Red Right Hand podcast, which is uh, where me and Josh sit down and rewatch all six seasons of the BBC slash netflix hit tv show the peaky blinders go check it out and then you also have the throne of the dragon podcast which is where me and josh sit down and rewatch the first episode so far hopefully season two comes out here pretty soon of hbo's house of the dragon from game of thrones series uh, while you're at it make sure to leave us a five-star review and write us a comment on whatever podcast service you're using and also make sure to check us out on tiktok and give us a follow at Is Survived By Productions. And hey, we're also on YouTube. Did you know that, Eric? We're on YouTube. I did. I did. Have you watched anything on YouTube? I wondered. A couple times. Okay, I wondered, yeah. I've seen sometimes, the cat. Sometimes, <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Sometimes it's refreshing to actually see the faces there talking to you, you know. Sometimes. It, it, it helps talking in your ear hole. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, we're uh, we're also on YouTube. Uh, you can just go on there and search Is Survived By Productions, and that'll have every episode from all of our shows that I just mentioned, subscribe to the channel. 
thumbs up the video. All right. We'll see you in the next episode where we sit down and we talk about the band, the almighty Norma Jean. See ya.